elegant furnishings. The family's finest bum china was laid out on a lily white tablecloth. The afternoon tea was completed with freshly baked French fancies. Sitting comfortably in one of the parlour's high-backed chairs, Victoria placed one lace-gloved hand over the other, adjusted her voluminous skirts and stared down at Algernon as he knelt before her. She knew what was coming. She had anticipated this day for months. Before he started to speak, she knew what he was going to say. It was the first time that they'd ever been together without a chaperone. Unless he'd come to the house with this specific purpose, her parents would not have allowed her to spend any time alone with a suitor. The idea of her being alone with a man was simply too scandalous for civilised society to contemplate. Victoria, my dearest, there was a tremor of doubt in his voice. Victoria liked that. It suggested he wasn't entirely certain that she would say yes. His bushy moustache bristled with obvious apprehension. His Adam's apple quivered nervously above his small, tied cravat. His large, dark eyes stared up at her with blatant admiration. He looked as though his entire future happiness rested on her response to this single question. She was dizzied by the rush of rising power. I've spoken to your father, Algernon began. I've discussed the matter with my own parents and employer. I've even gained tacit approval, approval from the local bishop. But now comes the time for the most important response of all, my dearest. Victoria, I've come to ask for your hand. She smiled smugly to herself. Outwardly, her face remained an impassive mask. Algernon, she murmured, I don't know what to say. Say yes, he said quickly. She allowed her lips to twist into a demure smile. He fumbled in the pocket of his waistcoat and produced a small gilt-edged box. Almost dropping it in his haste, he snapped the lid open and showed her a quaint ring that was encrusted with microscopically small, semi-precious stones. She recognised it as one of the dearest rings that were currently enjoying popularity. The initial letter of each stone, a diamond, an emerald, an amethyst, a ruby, another emerald, a sapphire and a topaz, spelt out the word dearest. The eclectic collection of colours made Victoria think it looked more like a childish novelty than a genuine declaration of their betrothal. This is a mere token of our betrothal, he guessed. Yes, Victoria agreed. She made no attempt to take the offered jewellery. It is a mere token, with the emphasis on the word mere, I think. He blinked with surprise. She could see it was time to test his mettle. Straightening her back, Quietly deciding that she liked having Algernon on his knees before her, Victoria said, Do you want me to consider you as a potential husband? I'd be honoured. Then get your cock out. Let me see what I get. The words hung between them like a thrown board to it. The grandfather in the hall outside continued to tick loudly. Algernon studied her face with an expression that was almost comical. Victoria, he whispered meekly, I don't think I heard you correctly. Could you please forgive me and say that again? Get your cock out, Victoria said flatly. If I'm going to consider marrying you, I want to make sure you're carrying something more impressive than that crappy little ring you just got. <laughs> His cheeks flushed bright pink. She could feel the inner muscles of her sex clutching as she watched him squirm. His embarrassment and awkwardness were exhilarating to behold. Knowing that she'd inspired these responses made her moist along the line of her pussy lips. If you want me as a wife, I have every right to know what my husband will be bringing to the marital bedroom. Get your cock out and show me the goods, or I'll have one of the servants escort you out of here now. Again, he hesitated. It took all Victoria's restraint not to rub her thighs together and gleefully enjoy his dilemma. Inside the tightly laced bodice of her corset, her nipples were hard and aching. A wave of lightheadedness came close to making her swoon in that high-backed chair where she waited. Unbutton your pants, show me your cock, or go away and tell your parents, your employer, and the bishop that I've rejected your offer. A <laughs> choice is yours, Algernon, but make it quickly. The tea is cooling. He <laughs> began to fumble with the buttons at the front of his trousers. The ring box fell to the floor and the gaudy jewellery dropped, forgotten on the oriental rug. 
Algernon's face was the shade of flustered crimson that Victoria had seen on the amber cheeks of drunks and ballers. On his bookish face, the colour was surprisingly fetching. She lowered her gaze as soon as he had exposed himself. The flaccid tube of his pink flesh hung innocuously from the front of his pants. It's not very big, is it? <laughs> it gets bigger, he said. Then make it bigger, she snapped. Because at the moment, that appalling little engagement ring looks slightly more attractive. There was an instant where she thought he might refuse. If there was any point when he was likely to reject her authority, Victoria knew it would be this moment when she had insulted both his gift and his manhood. <laughs> to make sure he didn't take advantage of the opportunity and go scurrying back to the sanctuary of his friends and family, she took the frills of her skirt up and dared to reveal a stocking-clad ankle. <laughs> make it big enough she goes, and I might consider saying yes. <laughs> he began to pull on himself. His gaze was fixed on her ankles, and his concentration appeared hard enough to etch wrought iron. His hand moved quickly up and down the limp length of his cock, and she watched the meagre tube of flesh thicken and grow. His fist was tight around the shaft, trapping blood into the dark and bulbous dome. As his hand continued to work, she saw that his fist had to travel further each time to go from base to the end. Stop masturbating snapped. He obeyed instantaneously. She grinned at the eager way that he'd given himself to her control. It's an adequate length, she conceded. She hoped that her smile was not so wide that he realised that she wanted him. If she was to accept his offer of marriage, this was a vital moment in their relationship. If she could make Algernon understand from this moment onward that she was the one in control, then he would be her malleable slave for the rest of their days together. Do you know how to use that cock of yours? <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I know what to do with it. <laughs> you may carry on handling yourself while we discuss my terms to accepting your offer, declared haughtily. Automatically, Algernon's hand went back to his cock. He stroked himself slowly and eventually managed to tear his gaze from her ankles so he could study her face. Certain that he would be more easily controlled if he wasn't studying her eyes, Victoria inched her skirts higher. She was showing off her shins and silently <laughs> to, to wear her sheerest stockings today. As she pulled the skirts higher, Algernon stroked himself more swiftly. Are you attached to that moustache? <laughs> it grows from my face. <laughs> Is that what you meant? No, Algernon. <coughs> Schoolmistress, you know perfectly well that's not what I meant. I was asking if you would lose that moustache if it meant I would consent to being your wife. She hitched her skirts higher. It was a daring poise that revealed her knees. <laughs> Another few inches and he would be able to see the tops of her stockings and the alabaster flesh of her thighs. Don't you like the look of my moustache? <laughs> it's not the look that worries me, Victoria purred. I'm more concerned about the way it, way it will feel when you lick my pussy. <laughs> he held himself rigid. She understood he was on the verge of climaxing and admired the restraint that he showed in holding off his potential orgasm. His eyes were momentarily glazed. His mouth hung open as though he had almost pulled too hard and pushed himself beyond the brink of reasonable self-control. Delighted by his torment, Victoria lifted her skirts higher. Aldenham's gaze fell to the tops of her stockings. She could see his eyes widen as he noted the pale flesh of her upper thighs. He licked his lips with appreciation when he saw the fact of curls that covered her most intimate secrets. Aside from selecting her finest hosiery for this appointment, Victoria had elected to meet Algernon without donning any undergarments. <laughs> it was a bold way for a young lady to deport herself, but she understood her courage was reaping ample rewards. Should we see how your moustache feels against me? She suggested. <laughs> a young lady has a right to know about these things before making a commitment of this magnitude. <laughs> Would you care to tom my hole for a moment? <laughs> Judiciously concentrate on the pleasure he was able to bestow. 
She wanted to fairly gauge the sensation of having his prickly moustache so close to the tender flesh of her sex. She was struggling hard to be the dominant member of their burgeoning relationship and wanted to behave in the manner she thought most befitting for an authoritative young lady. But arousal constantly distracted her thoughts. A soft tongue lapped at the outer lips of her sex. She arched her back against the seat. The warmth of Algernon's breath proved maddeningly exciting. He teased the dewy lips of her cleft until she was almost dizzy with the need for climax. She could tell he was positioning himself carefully, trying not to brush her most sensitive skin with the abrasive tickle of his bushy moustache. <laughs> Occasionally, an errant hair scoured her flesh, but it was a small distraction compared to the blood of his tongue travelling over her pussy. Nevertheless, she could see the facial hair might eventually present a problem. <laughs> <laughs> my clit, she insisted. Tongue my clit. It was a test. If he understood what she meant and went on to find her clitoris, she would consider taking him as a husband. <laughs> if he pulled back and looked puzzled, she would push him away and tell him he was <coughs> not worthy. <coughs> Algernon's tongue slipped the top of her sex and stroked the pulsating butt of her arousal. <coughs> the sensation was enough to make her groan. Victoria stuck at the back of her hand against her mouth to stifle a scream of delight. She pressed her shoulders back against the chair and thrust her pelvis sharply towards him. The urge for release had been strong before, but now, as his tongue chased lazy circles against the throbbing head of her clitoris, she realised she was only moments away from ecstasy. Knowing she had to show some restraint, determined that Algernon would not reduce her to a quivering wreck of satisfaction, Victoria steeled herself against the pleasure and said, Now, tongue inside my home. <laughs> he was more obedient than she dared to hope. The tongue slid slowly from her clitoris and eased between her labia. The warmth was divine. The intimate penetration was so intense that Victoria had to grip the arms of the chair to maintain her show of equanimity. His tongue slid deeper, transporting her to a plateau of unparalleled delight. And then she was cresting a cloud of satisfaction so strong that she couldn't hold herself back. Her inner muscles went into a joy-inspired convulsion. The fluid heat of her sex grew so hot that she was momentarily seared by its brilliance. The shock of pleasure was so strong that she wanted to scream with jubilation. With a magnificent show of control, Victoria remained composed throughout the climax. Muted tremors shook her body, but she wouldn't allow Algernon to see how strongly they affected her disposition. Pushing his face away, she adjusted her skirts and easily regained her composure as she settled herself decorously in the parlour's high-back chair. That was pleasantly done, she asked. <laughs> <laughs> She saw his fist remained clutched around his thick length. The idea of having him thrust between her legs was suddenly so appealing it was almost overwhelming. He had teased her wet to a wet and wanton furnace, and she could imagine him soaking those fires further as he rammed into her again and again. With an amazing show of self-discipline, Victoria pushed that thought from her mind. She regarded him coolly. Continue doing that while you admire me declared, and I will set out the terms and conditions that you need to meet before I consent to being your wife. He nodded eagerly. His hand slid down along his throbbing shaft. Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> First, he said, if you want me to be your wife, you'll provide me with a far better engagement ring than the piece of crap you offered me. <laughs> he nodded and apologised. She spoke over him. Diamonds, she explained. Large ones. And I think they always sit more prettily in white gold. Second, and this is vital if you ever want to taste my pussy again, lose the bloody moustache. <laughs> of course, he started to tell her it would be shaved off before the end of the day, but she was still talking over him. Third, and this is most important of all, I want you to know that I am in charge of our relationship. You may go to the races and the gentlemen's clubs. You may pursue your career as best befits a gentleman of our times. But when you get home, you will get down on your knees when I tell you, and you'll obey every instruction I give. Do you understand and accept that condition, Algernon? Victoria could see the hesitancy on his face. She watched his resistance flicker and die. She adjusted her voluminous skirts giving him a brief flash of the sodden pussy lips that he'd just tasted and knew that he was won over by the sight. I understand. 
and I accept, he panted. You shall be in control of our relationship. Her smile was thin-lipped with satisfaction. She gestured for him to come closer and said, Very well. You may leave shortly and go and tell your parents, your employer and the bishop, that I have consented to be your wife. Her gaze sparkled with mischievous intent as she reached for his length. Encircling his shaft with lace gloved fingers, she said, But before you go and do any of those things, didn't you say that you wanted my hand? 